The Ghana Education Trust Fund has denied awarding scholarships to three government appointees whose names have uh, been captured as beneficiaries in a performance audit report from the Auditor General's Office. The report, which spans uh, between 2012 and 2018, was to ascertain whether Get Fund acted in accordance with its mandate. The report listed the Minister for Education, Matthew Pukupempe, Procurements Minister Sarah Ajoa Safu, Minister for Employment, Ignatius Bafo Iwa, and the Executive Secretary of the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, Naka Prince Hamidu Ama, as beneficiaries. The audits observed, among other things, a failure on the part of Gets Fund in using a fair selection process, a situation it indicated allowed unqualified applicants to benefit rather than brilliant but needy Ghanaians. But the Get Fund refutes the observation of the audits and stated it is well within the mandates of the institution. The fund may pay its mandates provide support for such other educational activities and programs to serve strategic national interests. The guest fund insists the award of the scholarships to the three government appointees, though not out of place, did not happen under the watch of the current administration. Let's get on to the telephone lines now and uh, look at the uh, anti-corruption perspective of this whole uh, discussion. Adam Senanu is co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. He joins us now. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your time. So I know that uh, you've been uh, taking a closer look at the Auditor General's document. Uh, tell me what you make of it. Well, good afternoon to your viewers. Um it came as a surprise to me because I was not aware that a GET fund provides funding to um, MPs and the like for things like this. Albeit they explained that it's for strategic national purposes. Um, going into the documentation, it is good that the award did not happen under the current government when these persons were giving ministerial uh, appointments, etc. Uh, having said that, I think that one needs to interrogate whether truly the mandate of the GET Fund has that strategic aspect and whether we can claim that these trips to Harvard University, etc., were strategic and in the national interest. I think that um, until you have unpacked that, um, one cannot see whether something amiss has happened. And uh, so uh, what, what actions do you reckon should be taken if uh, there were to be some actions? Well, I don't immediately see a conflict of interest situation. Um, however, it could be a misapplication of the funds. And so what needs to be done is to find out how did they determine that this awards for uh, the minister, Matthew Poku, to go to Harvard, and I just have who say she didn't end up going anyway, um, Harvard Kennedy, how they took that decision. And one needs to look at the criteria carefully because we may be depriving truly vulnerable and poor citizens and young men and women of this country scholarships that ought to go to them if we take decisions like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that the, the Get Fund law is clear. I mean, the, the funds they are supposed to make available to support education is supposed to be uh, pre-secondary and then uh, tertiary institutions within Ghana. But there are lots of the uh, expenses we've seen that are for study abroad. If there is no provision that requires or allows or mandates them to send people abroad, then we have a situation where somebody must be held culpable for breaching the laws of the country. All right. Uh, Mr. Senanu, I will leave it here. We're grateful for your time. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. Adam Senanu is an uh, uh, anti-corruption campaigner, is a coach of the citizen movement against corruption. Let's now uh, take you through some of what exactly the law says on uh, Get Fund. And uh, you may know that Section 2 uh, of Act 5, 8.1 spells out clearly the objective of the fund. And as you see here, it is to provide finance to supplement the provision of education at all levels by government. It also says, uh, Section 2 says, for the purpose of attaining this objective, the money from the fund 
is to be dispensed as follows, and they've been listed. The first is to provide financial support to agencies and institutions under the Ministry of Education through the Ministry for the Development and Maintenance of Essential Academic Activities and Infrastructure in Public Education Institutions. So these are very uh, well laid out uh, objectives. And then uh, two, to provide supplementary funding to the scholarship secretariat. So bear in mind that uh, the access that the GET Fund is supposed to provide supplementary funding for the grant of scholarships to gifted but needy students for studies in second cycle and accredited tertiary institutions in Ghana, within Ghana. That's the key focus. And then uh, to contribute monies from the fund towards the operation of student loan schemes for students in accredited tertiary institutions through loan scheme mechanisms and agencies approved by the ministry. And to provide through the National Council on Tertiary Education grants to tertiary institutions to train brilliant students and members of faculties to undertake research and other academic programs of relevance to national development and to provide support, financial support to such educational activities and programs for the promotion of education as uh, the minister in consultation with the board may determine. Right, let's uh, quickly get on to the telephone lines. Uh, Vincent Asifar is the uh, public relations officer of the, uh, the Ministry of Education. Joining us, uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. So uh, I need you to clarify to us the uh, conditions and circumstances that the Get Fund, for example, approved for uh, funding for those who have been uh, listed, including, uh, as you may already know, uh, the sums that were dispensed on Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, Ajoa Safo, and all the rest, actually. Well, I think you rightly put it. Um, Get Fund is supposed to be giving scholarships to um, needy but gifted or brilliant students. Uh, but let me state that in 2018, at the instance of um, Get Fund, we realized that there are some anomalies as to the approach and the processes to which scholarships are awarded to beneficiaries of GET Fund in this country. And so we wrote or we requested from the Auditor General's Department to be able to undergo such a performance audit. Um, and we had a report, and clearly we could see that from 2012 to 2018, and um, we have to get it right, the distinction is the academic year and not the fiscal year. From 2012 to 2018 academic year, we realized that there were a number of anomalies as to how um, students were getting um, get fund scholarships in this country. And for that matter, we had to make sure that um, the right processes are being followed before we could be able to give scholarship to students. So the process are that, yes, first and foremost, you, you need to be a needy student, a needy but brilliant or gifted student, number one. Um, secondly, you must have also um, applied or shown some amount of willingness to get funds that you need um, such a scholarship. And clearly, the committee who sits on it will have to also go to and um, ascertain that indeed you are a needy and a gifted student for that matter before um, such a award could be made to you. However, um, that is not sacrosanct. If you read the Act, that is the Act 581, and you read the subsection 2E, clearly it states that um, some amount of monies may be dispensed to um, some other educational activities. And so at, at, at that um, section, it may not necessarily be for needy but brilliant students, but for promotion of education in this country, the minister in consultation with the Board of Trustees may decide to support any students in this country for promotion of education. Right, so, so I mean, I, 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 I acknowledge that explanation, but I am concerned, very concerned, that if we look at the list of beneficiaries, uh, some who are pretty well-known, popular persons, they cannot be said to be needed. And some of the programs, they, they studied PhD in law and media studies and all those things. How do we justify that these are of relevance to uh, the country's development and from people who uh, possibly could could afford um, which names are you referring to Stephen well I mean I'm sure you I'm sure you've seen the list current administration has ever 
Um, I'm sure you've seen the list, Ali, so I don't want to be going on um, a name mentioning I'm not, straight I'm not in. saying the basis for it. Uh, but you see, the, the answer may also lie in subsection 2 of 581, uh, Stephen. And I'm saying that get fund scholarships are not necessarily supposed to be given to needy but brilliant students. Yes, it's, it says as the core mandate of um, get fund, but the law opens it up that if the country or the nation will want to also ensure promotion of education, then some monies may be dispensed for other purposes. So it is possible that the minister, I'm not saying any minister has benefited from debt fund, but I'm saying that it is possible that the minister or the member of parliament may benefit from debt fund, but for the purposes of promotion of education in this country. And I think that when you put the interpretation to it, in my estimation, it will not uh, falter the law. And uh, the law itself also clearly uh, spells out the conditions under which monies will be expended, that the, those who are sponsored or funded should be within uh, institutions within Ghana. But uh, a tall list of what we have seen suggests that most of the funding uh, was for study abroad. Well, I think that is where we'll be in art item. I'm saying this because um, we, we, we suspected the anomalies, and that is why we caused for the um, audit um, performance, the performance audit in the <coughs> processes of the um, awarding of scholarships. And so uh, that is where going forward as a nation, we should be able to have a way to be able to deal with it. But I will also um, take a different position in this angle, especially because when we want to promote education, the law was not secular, the, the law was not explicit to say that it will have to happen in Ghana. Although maybe but brilliant students who, who are supposed to be getting scholarship in this country are supposed to be happening in Ghana. And put differently, get fund is supposed to be able to sponsor these students in Ghana here. But if you want to promote education in Ghana, however shape it will take or form it will take, that we can bring the needed promotion of education in this country, then so be it. And so it may be outside, uh, because we've lived in this country whereby all of us knew that shall will have to mean mandatory as per, as, as, as per our law. Right. By the time came, we realized that shall was not mandatory. So I think that it may take any other shape or form. Right, so, so let me clarify. Uh, you are suggesting to us that the performance audit conducted by the Auditor General was at your insistence or instructions or directive? Absolutely, Stephen. Mm. And so what, what becomes of uh, the, the outcomes now, now that this uh, audit has come forward? What can you tell us to be the steps that the ministry is hoping to put in place to fix the mess, actually? Well, that's obvious. Uh, if you check the report itself, it, it tells you that the period of 2012-2016, there were budget overrun of about 300%. So I've been issue, um, when we got the mandate from the people of Ghana in 2016, uh, clearly the only um, approach for us was to ensure that we will not give any scholarship to anybody at all for the period of four years before we'll be able to pay up the debt that we came to meet. That, that was the reckless administration of the SOR government. But that is enough. We had to take that innovative ideas, the innovative ways to be able to still or continue awarding scholarship to students in this country. And that is where for the first time you could see that get fun. You have one minute remaining. Scholarship or scholarship to students in this country. So somebody will get an admission to University of Ghana will be paying about 5000 or 6000 right. but Get Fund will now give partial payment of about 3000 or 2500 That's partial payment. And so we have to use innovative ways to continue giving scholarships to people in Ghana, especially needy. Right. And by going forward, I think that it is the responsibility of Get Fund and the Ministry of Education to be able to sit down to see how best we will right. be able to correct the anomalies that we find in our Get Fund structure. Right, uh, Vincent Sefa, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Vincent Sefa is Director of Communications at the Ministry of Education.